Uh, hi guys, how's it? So I have been on a, uh, in the name of Jesus, how's it in the name of Jesus? That is something I'm very clear uh, on. I've been on a short rampage the past couple of days, maybe two weeks, and I've been uploading like almost every day, if not every day, these uh, shorts. Okay, and um, well, I'm, I made a decision to stop because it's exasperating, it's taking too much out of me, there's a lot of editing involved, and sometimes I get hyper creative and it takes me literally like maybe 20 minutes to half an hour, maybe even 45 minutes to do one short, and I've been doing like anything upwards of 15 to 18 shorts a day, or to like 28, maybe even 30. And it's not that the Lord has told me to stop. I've just decided that I I can't carry on like this. The reason I've been doing them is because I, I'm basically reacting. It's it's a reaction shock, like uh, an adrenaline response to Facebook uh, having shadow banned me violently. Like I'm going nowhere now there, and I'm panicking because you guys know my life is beleaguered on all sides, and I really need a way out of this. And it appears that there's no way out. But I uh, calmed down yesterday, last night actually, after reading Revelation 8 because I woke up yesterday morning to hear from the Holy Spirit, golden censor, golden censor. I didn't read up on it until the evening. And when I finally opened wrote a Revelation, I actually paged through Revelation because I knew that I had seen that word in Revelation. And then I found it in Revelation 8. And upon reading Revelation 8, I started to calm down. I started to relax. This morning, I then woke up uh, to hear basically the chatter, the chit chat, the conversation of people in the occult. Yeah, people who are involved in fruitless deeds of darkness, essentially, uh, saying, but my prayers are answered. My prayers have been heard. So obviously, Garabo is not onto anything. She's just like basically a cloud without rain. Uh, the tatamount of it, uh, accusing me of being all talk, not so much all talk and no action but you know a bite yes thank you a bark without a bite yeah i was being called one who does not have any bite at all albeit barking vehemently and so what god was showing me with that is that they have gotten to such an elevated level of pomp that they are reasoning like beasts in trying to make themselves understand or put together the pieces of the, pu the pieces of the puzzle as to why I, who have been obviously consecrated to God, am going nowhere and laughing in comparison to them. They are literally coming to conclusions that, that their satanic activity must be approved by God because of my, what appears to be an answered prayer. I am, uh what like not eight, eight going on nine years now in my squalor in the suffering that i've been in while they've been getting everything they want jobs uh homes children c businesses thriving etc and they look at me and in reasoning like beasts come to the conclusion that god must obviously be with them now y'all need to understand here in south africa I, I would go so far as to say africa at large there is a problem among especially black people with ancestral worship and they so like they they have so deified mere mortals who have passed away that they imagine that god must obviously approve they're similar to muslims in that way who have made a god in their own making and because he does not appear to be that bad they just run with it even though there are evidences all around them in their periphery that their god is not god must obviously be the, be the devil because of what their god often charges them to do now now, within black culture and this ancestral worship, their gods are always charging them to hurt other people. Their gods are divided between families. Like, everybody in their own family structures ancestrally are linked to a, a batch of deities. And these deities don't stand with each other. For instance, <clears throat> if as a black person, you go and you marry somebody in a clan that historically your ancestors were at war with, or at loggerheads with, there will be apparently bad fortune that will fall on you because you decided to go and marry somebody that belongs to the surname of your historical enemies. Now, that is a kingdom that is divided. Do you understand? The scriptures make it clear that a kingdom divided cannot stand. Yet, within ancestral worship, there are so many divisions in these deities in that they're all ancestors, they're all worshipped by members of a particular family, but they're at odds with each other in the cosmos. That war makes it such that every single time a person goes through something in life that is negative, they attribute it to ancestors not being happy and they have to do a deep dive, a root cause analysis as to why the ancestors are, are unhappy 
with him? Did I marry wrong? Did I date wrong? Did I take up the wrong job? Am I affiliated with, affiliated, sorry, with friends that are of a clan that is unapproved of? I need to find this out. And this is the kind of stuff that gets them crawling, unfortunately so, into the huts of Sangomas, spiritists, witch doctors, basically, to inquire uh, of the, you know, gods as to why have you made my life so bankrupt? Why am I bereft of kids? Why am I bereft of prosperity in my career? Uh, why am I bereft of prosperity in my academic endeavors? Why, why, why? And then, of course, upon reading into bones or whatever, the Sangha must give them an answer that they imagine must uh, therefore be right because the Sangha must have eerily, um, what is the word I am looking for, accurate? information uh, to provide them about their lives that makes them feel like there's no way that this man or this woman could have ever known this so therefore they must be right well in christianity those are called familiar spirits they follow people around all their lives and so they have intel on everybody they've got intelligence on people and and this is what causes people to imagine to get goosebumps basically when they visit sangomas because these sangomas ought not to know certain things so therefore they must supernaturally be getting information from somewhere which is true they are indeed tapping into the musical metaphysical realm but they're tapping into fallen angels um they're tapping into demon spirits they're tapping into evil uh forces uh yeah nonetheless they give them this information and and so based on the depth of accuracy of prediction by the sangoma on things that are happening in their lives they then conclude that every other ounce of advice that the sangoma must be giving them must obviously be the right type of path to take we're not withstanding not realizing that just by mere virtue of visiting that sangoma they are like the tenement of a person dabbling with the Ouija board. They are inviting spirits into their ecosystems that will likely give them quite the anxiety, the hard time, the life trajectory, the charting of their lives in a wicked direction inevitably, like well into the future. In the absence of God intervening, therefore, they will then also inevitably go to hell. They get made to be addicted to these ancestors, right? They conclude that this must therefore be right, the right path, the only way that makes sense because nobody has ever so accurately predicted anything at all that I uh, that, that is true of my life. And then they stick to their guns. So black people are severely confused, like no man's business, between the whole Jesus thing and their ancestors. They imagine that these scriptures can't possibly be accurate. Accurate, uh, about Christ being the only way and so because the scriptures have been written by men what they call mere mortals not realizing that it is written in God's word that scripture is God breathed men were led by the Holy Spirit as they speak you know to write these scriptures however th based on these scriptures being written by men they imagine that since man is an error is errant is full of err erring since mankind can make mistakes in a way that God can't the Lord must have um must understand their plight and their stand with ancestors but human beings did, didn't quite get it and on top of that the scriptures were written by hebrew men by uh the the, the israelites they were written by people in the middle east that could not have known anything about african culture and so they were they gone to grab entire bodies of scripture and disqualify them based on their flesh in creating a deity of their own making imaginative that god almighty must have gotten the african plight while the hebrews didn't and so for those reasons this is why i can comfortably just sit back and relax when i am doing things that are obviously contrary to the scriptures uh in so therefore believing this they then go and grab other scriptures completely out of context to justify their polytheism that would be the worship of more than one god all right uh with with the bible like i once heard a pastor at a wedding i was watching it actually on television it was the wedding of two of two celebrities in the country um Kimang Dinewo and that boyfriend of hers i forgot whatever they were both sang sangomas they they had both been initiated into the craft of ubungoma and now the pastor that was officiating over their wedding had to acknowledge um, this component of their union they subscribed to christianity but they also you know were into this whole other stuff this other spirituality and i watched that uh marriage officiated over by a man calling himself a child of the living god he was a pastor literally butching scripture out of context and said that that passage of scripture that speaks about us having a cloud of witnesses around us is is our ancestors that it's written in the scriptures that we have got a cloud of ancestors around us and it's written in the scriptures as a cloud of witnesses. So 
so it's not just God that's gazing upon you guys lovingly on your wedding day but it's your ancestors and the scriptures make it clear I cringed of course God the shock of my life I feared it sort of kind of gnashed my teeth even for the pastor because he is facing a grave judgment <clears throat> by the God of the universe but that's what Africans do they grab scripture and they find their ancestral worship in the Bible by discombobulating it now it is written in God's word in Revelation that <coughs> sorry <clears throat> if anybody adds to God's word they're in trouble it's also written in God's word that if anybody takes out of God's word they're in trouble it's also written in I believe first or second Peter that people condemn themselves when they grab God's word and they discombobulate it uh, to fit their own passions uh, their flesh is is what is making them do that right now for me when it comes to all this stuff with ancestors why it is that I come from Africa I come from these roots I come from this persistence and to the worship of false gods and yet I so vehemently despise them to test them is a combination of just my own natural ration reason logic why it doesn't make sense to worship them but also the Holy Spirit of course the Holy Spirit leads into all truth those who worship God worship him in spirit and in truth so if you're indwelt by the Holy Spirit you will be made ultimately even though you start out in the faith kind of fluffy once you are past spiritual milk and you graduate to spiritual meat you will drop it the Lord will sanctify you and you will recognize the folly of that practice however I never even ever subscribed to ancestors like ever even when I came when I was new in Christ I took the Bible as just like voracious there was nothing of it that was uh, of error so therefore I ran with it I never really had an issue with uh, dropping this side false spirituality like a hot potato because God had granted me grace to just believe by faith do you understand that that was a blessedness that I had quite frankly uh, but I'm gonna explain to you guys the logical side of things that ought make people just reason apart from even being spiritual because I am trying to reach for Christ human beings that have no Holy Spirit that are without sufficient conviction of the folly of this side spirituality uh, and so therefore are just running with both the Bible because they're too scared to drop Jesus like a ball due to like a hot potato due to the observation of what would be answered prayer in their lives I'm trying to help these people I want to get to them reasonably so with my ration my logic my reason instead of being hyper spiritual and using even scripture to justify why Christ is the only way uh, I want to use reason yeah logic because like I said they are unspiritual and they there's a way that seems right to them but it leads to death I'm trying to snatch them out of this and in the absence of them responding appropriately from what God has been showing me off late they're gonna die guys people are facing death like as in death Just breathe your last I'm not they're already spiritually dead so here I'm, I'm speaking actual dropping to the ground heart stop bleeding aka type vibes they're gonna die and I already did a series speaking about impending death of many people involved in, in dark arts dabbling with polytheism and in, in the occult and it got barely any views because people don't want to read or listen to death prophecies until the prophet is made famous by the death of said prophesied over person I don't want to be like the prophet that prophesied aka's death and then the dude ignored him he went and spoke on Twitter about how it is that this guy is just a naysayer that is scaring the living daylights out of him for no reason at all and then he passes away he passed away like a, what six seven months later and now the prophet is popular he's famous yeah okay so the prophet got vindicated by God but the Lord has this beautiful way of thinking that exceeds that of the self-fulfilling prophecies of prophets what he did with Jonah he basically said go preach to the Nava and tell them they're gonna die if they don't repent and Jonah was reluctant to do that because he knew that God gives grace if people do repent and so he might end up looking like a fool if they don't actually die then the Lord put a tree over Jonah and he was cool and then he took a tree away and he was like in the same way that you are groveling and moaning and complaining to me right now that I've taken your shade away shall I not then continue to maintain or give um, shelter and shade to the people of Nineveh you're, you're being a, a selfish prophet in that you want every prophecy that I give you to come to pass when some of them are warnings that if people repent they won't come to pass so the Lord disregards the, the pomp or the arrogance of the prophet 
and the desire of the prophet to be right in favor of those over whom the prophet prophesies. So God cares for Nineveh in a way that he sometimes just refuses to allow the prophecy that he gave to Jonah to come to pass. Instead, his intention through prophesying through Jonah is to make Nineveh repent instead of Nineveh die. So he will suffer the prophet to be humiliated for like uttering false prophecies, even though he was truthfully prophesying because people repented. And so the prophecy did not come to pass, which is why we ought not be fast as Christians to call someone a false prophet when something that they prophesied does not happen. You need to rather look at the ecosystem as to whether or not people repented and responded appropriately. And that would be the reason why prophecy appears to not be fulfilled. Of course, you got to test the spirits. Everything <clears throat> comes with with, uh, you know, they're, they're, there's all oh, like wheat and tares. Like there will be people who will prophesy falsely and then later on when their prophecies don't happen, claim for the life of them that uh, they're like Jonah. No, you, you need to be discerning in that regard. But in recognizing that factuality about Jonah and how it is that God dealt with him concerning the people of Nineveh, I'm here trying to help people be more like Nineveh, humble myself the way that God humbled Jonah, so that people can repent instead of ending up like Sodom. So I come back and I repeat the messages that I have to bring forward over and over and over again. I did batches upon like guys, the number of shorts that I've been doing, just telling witches, you're going to die. You're going to die. You're going to die. I have maybe like over the past few days, 120 shorts that I have done, like maybe even 140, just warning people you're going to die. I've been exasperated, literally out of my mind. I am tired and I am worn out. I am at the end of myself. My endocrine system can't deal. I'm literally getting headaches because I keep repeating the same message every day due to the fact that I keep dreaming about the same things every day. And people are not listening to me. They're not watching me. Facebook has shadow banned me. YouTube has shadow banned me. Everywhere I go, I'm shadow banned. So now I'm doing long form content again. So as to expand on my shorts. Hoping that people will repent because I get where you're coming from, but I'm smart. So because I'm smart, I'm going to try and explain to you why it doesn't make sense to stick with your ancestors and why you're going to die inevitably. And the Lord made it overtly known to me, understood that when do you stop uploading your shorts? That's when the first of those dominoes is going to start to tip. So I'm even delaying finishing my shorts. I've got one batch of 20 shorts left. And I am waiting to do them like I'm doing them at a snail's pace. And I would much rather upload this content first before I can upload the rest of those shorts. Because the Lord showed me that once you upload your last short, when you decide you're going to stop with your shorts because you're tired with them. Or can take these little nitbits and people are still not listening to you. When you stop, that's when the first one of them is going to die. And it's going to be someone you know. Let's move to the next part.